You think I'm made of money? Mr. Scrooge, how delightful to meet you, sir. Sorry, I can't say the same. You and I are going to do wonderful things together. Susan, you've taken on what could be a very intimidating task, mm. and that's adapting Charles Dickens' novel from a novel written about the making of it. <laughs> yes. I had that thought sometimes. <laughs> it's a kind of cheeky thing to be doing. Well, you know, you did it very well. You did it in a way that was um, completely not saccharine. Hooray. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, and true to the, to the spirit of, of Dickens and his, and his book. Well, that, that really mattered being true to the spirit of the book. So it had to have that humor. It had to have sentiment. It had to have, you know, it had to have that kind of energy. Yeah. So it was a challenge, but, it, but, but it wasn't, the book isn't the inspiration. So. Yeah, what a book, what mm -hmm. an inspiration. Mm -hmm. There was a time in my life when I read it every Christmas in my 20s or 30s. A lot of people tell me that, or they really? do it every year as a family, or they go to see it. It's, it's like, it's sort of a, it's a very important book for people. And it was a first Christmas story, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't technically, I think there had been other people who had written, apparently Washington Irving wrote a Christmas story that, that, you know, that Dickens was aware of. Was but it a horror novel about it? It might have been, it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the first one to write this uh, popular, incredibly popular story. And that became sort of the model for all Christmas stories. I mean, right down to It's a Wonderful Life almost. You know, the idea that Christmas is a time of redemption and it's a time for family and it's a time for remembering the poor and all of those things that we think about as being the meaning of Christmas kind of date back to this book. There I am looking at Christopher Plummer. We were just talking about him and how lovely he is in this mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of surprises me that he would do a Scrooge, but... He, well, why does it surprise you? I don't know. He's, he has a fearsome image. It's yes. a classic image or fearsome. Well, he's a great actor and he yeah. can do anything. And he really, he kind of was a great supporter of the film from the beginning. So, I mean, it's, he's really really the reason we got it made and uh, I think he just loved the spirit of the movie I you know I, I it, it appealed to him on some level so and he's so great because he has the humor and the danger of the character yes of looking back mm -hmm. <laughs> now did you find yourself <laughs> sort of mirroring Dickens struggle and putting this together did you ever notice where your 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 work sort of Intertwined. Well, it was pointed out to me oh. <laughs> that I had a lot of things in common with Dickens. Really? Not necessarily his genius, but his uh, his self doubt in this movie. Anyway, you know the the feeling blocked, and also feeling like that perhaps he was an imposter and he should get out of the business. And also, I would say what I identify with is that he was a man who sort of couldn't sit still. He had to when he was working on his books, he would walk for hours through the streets of London talking out the characters, imagining scenarios, and stealing from everywhere, yes. you know, the great yes. theater of the world, London, was his great inspiration, so he was always listening and kind of grabbing little bits out of the air. It was fantastic, all the little uh, sort of Dickens trademarks that we learned about, and, uh, and William Makepeace Thackeray, that was sensational. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? Yeah. That's based on truth. They did have a huge rivalry. They were very different kinds of novelists, and they were both very popular in their time. Uh, and so they had this kind of frenemy kind of relationship. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have a name for it. I don't yeah, we have a name for it. It's very modern, it go, but it goes back to the, to the 1840s. <laughs> now, where was the film shot? I haven't been able to find that out. It was, it was, all, it was all shot in Dublin. Because Dublin oh. um, is a treasure trove of Georgian-era houses. Oh. And uh, also, it's a lot easier to film there than in London. But it's, uh, they have all these perfectly preserved buildings there from, that are from the right time period. That wasn't bombed in the war, basically. So. Yeah. And interesting to think that he actually was in Toronto, isn't that great? I know, yeah. and in Montreal, and went to Niagara Falls, and put on uh, put on plays along the way, and yeah. I, it was funny that they were decrying his um, his New York stories, but I remember reading those with great fascination when he was in the tenements. And uh, well, he told it like it was. He went to yeah. prisons. He talked about slavery. I mean, they were they weren't expecting that. You know, this this charming Englishman that they expected to be. Um, but he had a lot of criticisms of the U.S. on his first visit there, and, and they didn't like it. Yeah, wow. Well, 
well, I have no criticisms for this film. I thought it was a delight. Thank oh. you so much, Susan. Thank you so much. That's enough. Back to work. God bless us, everyone.